Donna Speciali. Well, Donna, thank you very much for being here. And if you'd like to make a case for your next contract extension, yeah. look at <laughs> I got to learn from that guy. He's, <laughs> he's pretty good. <laughs> In all seriousness, I, I want to start with you. Um, about two and a half years ago, a big deal that maybe a number of folks may have missed or forgotten about, $4.8 billion merger to create your current company, Televisia Univision, largest Spanish language content producer in the world. Particularly as it relates to sports, what has that merger done in terms of giving you more resources, more, resources, more strength, more strategy? What has that done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's been two and a half years. Um, Listen, they were two, they're both prior to the merger, two powerhouse brands. Univision in the US being the leading Spanish language company with two broadcast networks, Univision, Unimas, two cable networks, Galavision, 2DNA. Now we've created a streaming service. Um, and Televisa being, you know, number one in, in Mexico. Um, Televisa and Univision have always been connected. Um, they produce all the original, the most original Spanish language programming and um, always had a connection with Univision. And bringing them two together, given their 600 million Spanish speaking people in the country now, it was inevitable that it was so important that we now created this global powerhouse. So now TU, Televisa Univision, is now the leading Spanish-speaking media and content company in the world, um, which has now given us the resources and the backing to now compete in, a, in, the, in the landscape of what's going on with sports rights. Well, to that end, it's been very interesting what's happened since then as it relates to Spanish language rights. Traditionally, it's been just sort of an afterthought, throw in, you know, pick your metaphor here, but real audiences now and real dollars attached to that. Um, what have you seen from your chair as that trend has emerged and how are you taking advantage? Yeah, I mean, listen, um, Mexico uh, rights, you know, they, they don't always come together. Um, there's not always, you know, global rights uh, that come together. Mexico has rights to the Super Bowl. Mexico um, has the Olympics. Um, and so sometimes they are separate entities. Um, but it's been really important for us to be able to play in this space. For us to, I mean, I don't know if you realize what happened in 24 from a Univision perspective, but um, Copa was a enormous, enormous tournament. We'll talk of more three about weeks soccer in a second. This, yeah, this July, and um, it lit just kind of took, it's been taking on a, a life of its own. You know, Hispanics in my mind right now, um, I kind of said this to you before, it's like damned if we do, damned if we don't. We have been doing such an amazing job in talking about Hispanics and the growth and being 20% of the population and everything that's going on with it, that now Hispanics are now leading the trend with, in my mind, US sports. And a lot of the leagues are now seeing it. That sort of ties into some macro level changes, certainly the country, the United States, you mentioned Mexico before, but here in the US, certainly we're getting more diverse, more Spanish speaking households. In terms of serving that with sports content, how much of that from your perspective is sort of a trailing indicator or how much are you sort of seeding like, hey, this is a thing here, we can make you a fan? Because it sort of probably works on both levels. Yeah, I mean, listen, we are the home of soccer. Um, we always have been. Um, and we've been living and breathing it for years and years. It's now, finally, the United States is finally leaning in to what we have known forever. And I'm thrilled because, you know, again, with us being 20% of the population, it was just a matter of time. And I don't know about you when you were a kid. I played soccer and nobody even yep. cared about it. I'm showing my age, but like the person we talked about at the time was Pele. So please. <laughs> I'm really 20, so don't even go there. Um, <laughs> but now, you know, these players are household names. And it's really important that what I'm seeing is that the advertising community now and marketers are now realizing that soccer is the place to be. Um, and you're seeing it across the board. What's interesting is when you look at a soccer match in English language, 
and you watch it than on us, it's a very different experience. The passion points and what goes on on those two telecasts are very different from English language to Spanish language. We now have a lot of viewers that are coming into our networks that actually are non-Hispanic because they love the passion points and what is happening on our networks, and there's a huge distinction about what's going on. Could you expound on that a little bit? Because certainly come World Cup time, we're familiar back in the day with an Andres Cantor goal score and you know some of the more colorful broadcasts. Goal! Yeah, exactly. That sort of thing we're familiar with, but it sounds like you're talking about something much more and for all 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a different experience. I mean, our announcers, you know, they get into it. I mean, the, the countries, are, they live and breathe it. They, they've grown up with this, and they basically are following, you know, their countries throughout it. Um, and also, soccer is all year round. I mean, if you look at what we represent, we are the home of soccer. We represent over 50% of all soccer viewing. That's across English language and Spanish language. If you take that a step further and just go to Spanish speaking, we represent 75% of that viewership. Huge number. So it's huge. So now basically what is happening is that the fandom is now transcending across the board. Um, and I'm just loving that soccer now is becoming and marketers are finally, and I will tell you, it has been, you know, we've been chipping away at it. They, they realized that it was definitely something they want to lean into, but now the ratings are speaking for themselves. I mean, Copa this summer was astronomical. Obviously, it was in the U.S. The stadiums were sold out, and the ratings and the Copa final did better than, it was our highest rated besides World Cup that was on our air. So... Your point is well taken in terms of the growth of the soccer, and clearly there's a lot happening with MLS specifically, NWSL specifically, um, but they're both not the number one they're leagues not. in the world in their respective sports. The women might get their tougher climb for MLS. Where do you see that going, and, and how is that sort of growth curve going to continue here in the U.S.? Yeah, I think MLS has, a, you know, has some work to do. Um, you know, we, we do a little bit of it. Um, you know, to me, you're, you're seeing it more from, you know, Euro and Copa and Championship Leagues, and, you know, we have Gold Cup in, in next summer. Um, listen, I'm really thrilled that the World Cup is coming to the U.S., okay? It's Mexico, U.S., and Canada, right? Um, but it's a inflection point for the sport, right? It's large. a huge inflection point. Goes into, you know, 26, but. There's a lot of money that these advertisers have leaned into to get those rights. And those rights are in a very short window of time. So what is happening in the marketplace now, and we are in the market basically doing the road to World Cup. Because if you look at what's happening, we have Liga MX. Yep. Okay, we have Liga MX La Familia. Familia. That's 40 weeks out of the year. This summer we had Copa and Euro Championship. Next summer we have Gold Cup. So now you basically will be on air. It, it's never ending. Never ending. And we have all the qualifying matches. So in order for an advertiser to take advantage of what's happening with World Cup, and I'm so excited about it, you got to start now and lead into it and, and follow the whole path and get the scale out of what they're spending. So shifting gears a little bit from football to American football, you were Super Bowl. part. Yes, you were partnered with uh, CBS for the Super Bowl. Huge audience, 2.3 million um, for the Spanish language broadcast by itself. Uh, your um, executive said there was a lot of upside from that figure, and what sort of jumped out to me, I think, if I have the stack correct, 70 percent of those viewers had not tuned in during the prior rounds of the playoffs. Yeah. Um, so what did you learn from that whole experience? Yeah, um, it, it, was, it was great. I mean, it was such an unbelievable experience. And I also think advertisers and the marketers were really, really happy on how we leaned in. The NFL um, and all the leagues, because we also just did, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. We did a deal with the MLB. Now the leagues are realizing NFL is a brand. MLB is a brand. Brands are now realizing that the Hispanic audience is a huge growth driver. In order for them to grow their brand, they're now realizing the Hispanics 
fan base is where they need to play. So when they came to us and wanted us to partner with CBS last year, we were, we were thrilled to do it. Um, and we worked really, really nicely with CBS. And you know, um, we didn't go together to the marketers, but we knew who was going to be doing English language on their end and you know, what we were doing on Spanish language. Not everybody that did English language did Spanish, and not everybody that did Spanish did English, um, their choices. But um, we really leaned into it, and we did a lot of ancillary programming with it as well. We didn't just rely on just that Super Bowl. Um, you know, we did a lot of programming leading up to it with Desperate in America, um, and then really just did a lot of storytelling. We have a um, content studio that we do, and we thought it was really, really important to do a lot of storytelling leading up to it to be able to get you know our audience to understand and understand what was going on with the NFL. To your point, because they hadn't watched the game prior to that. But they leaned in and they're loving it. And I think the NFL was really pleased. And obviously, they're, they're, they're continuing doing it with Fox and Telemundo this year. Which I'll get to in a second. But I want to sort of just stay with CBS for a second on this larger point. And when I talked with Charlie Collier from Roku this morning, we talked a little bit about this sort of co-opetition concept of sort of competing and work, uh, working with yeah. networks We're at the frenemies. same time. We're frenemies. Yeah, so what is, what is your <laughs> sense of the frenemy thing? It, listen, I've been in this business a long time. I, I think it, it, it works. Um, I mean, you and I just talked about it, March Madness, right? CBS and Turner for years have had this connection, um, and I think it works. Um, you know, I'm friendly with John Halley and that team, and, um, you know, I love the guys at Fox. I'm friendly with Mark Marshall at NBC. I mean, we're all pretty connected, and I think our goal is to be able to rise all boats. Um, not all of the partners have broadcast networks in Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know, us and Telemundo are really the only others. They have cable. But you know the cable landscape is changing, unfortunately. So is linear, but cable is definitely not in the space. I'll get to and that I think in a these leagues want a powerhouse. The leagues want broadcast. The leagues are letting us putting it on streaming. Okay, cable isn't doing what it has done anymore. And I think broadcast now, whether it's Univision and Unimas and Telemundo, those are the games now, and that's where the viewership is for Spanish language. So for the Super Bowl this year, Fox, which of course has the English language rights, working with Telemundo, to what extent is, will you have any sort of presence for the Super Bowl? No, nope. um, Mexico has the rights, so you know they'll they'll be doing it um, just like they did last year. But from a U.S. perspective, it, it's going to be on Telemundo. Uh, to my knowledge, Fox is selling both. Um, we sold the Spanish when it was on Univision. We did our own selling with Spanish language. They did their English language. In this scenario, um, I believe Fox is selling both. Um, I hope it's to your point, not a giveaway like. It's been in the past um, because I don't think it'll do what the NFL wants it to do. What is your relationship with Telemundo like? Obviously, as we're discussing, this is a fast-growing market. Is there? We're competitive. But is there enough? <laughs> but is there enough for everybody? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, I. Um, what I've been doing over the past, no, I can't believe three and a half, four years is basically getting the messaging out about the growth of the Hispanic audience and the growth potential for businesses. And there are still so many marketers that do not lean in to the Hispanic audience. And it's very sad. It, they don't make it a priority, and they don't see it as a landscape of what's going on in the country, sports or not. So you know, we and the team have created, you know, a, a lot of capabilities to kind of push into the marketing landscape to help educate these marketers in learning what Hispanic marketing is all about and the potential that they have. That has been helping Telemundo too. Um, you know, I, I want to rise all boats. Um, you know, we've been adding a lot more pharma money. We, Autos is huge with us. Telco is huge with us. So over time, more and more advertisers, we now have over 500 advertisers, but there's 1,500 marketers that are in English language that are still not in Spanish language. Sports are not. Right. Um, and that's what 
Telemundo and us have in common. We're both trying to push the messaging out there to get marketers to realize that the Hispanic audience is a huge growth driver for business, and that short term, long term, you will not grow your business without the Hispanic audience. You mentioned baseball before, and we talked to Charlie before about uh, Roku's uh, relationship with the league. As the playoffs are about to start here in a few weeks, how does that sort of come to life on your networks? Yeah, we did a deal with MLB. Um, we announced it. Uh, we had just announced it, but we started. Um, so we do. Um, we will be having some of the playoffs um, that'll be airing shortly, and then we do have the World Series uh, first game of the World Series that'll be airing on our on our network for the first time. So you know, we're we're kind of. I think every, we're kind of putting our dipping our toe in the water. Um, would love to do more. But I think it, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, the season kind of started and we were doing everything, you know, a little bit last minute. We were trying to get ahead of it. So I think next year you'll probably see uh, a lot more of that happening with us. Um, and, we, and we love partnering with them. Now, Fox would never say, which has the World Series as well in yes, English they here. I know. They, uh, they wouldn't say it officially, but certainly they're rooting for Yankees, Dodgers, given the Otani judge thing. Do you have the same rooting interest or does it not matter as much for you? No, I mean, if you look at baseball, look how many Latino players there are. I mean, it's huge. Um, but yes, listen, we are, a, we are a U.S. We do want the teams that obviously still do well. We are all about ratings, so we want it to do well with us as well, as well as on English language. So yes, I'm, I am a Yankee fan, so I do want it. You mentioned some of the media disruption before, and I, we've been talking a lot during the day about um, disruption all across the space and all these new streaming bundles and everything, trying to sort of figure out how and where to place content and how to monetize content. How are you sort of seeing those trends play out in Spanish language media? Is it the same? Is it different? Is it more or less? What are it, making sense of all of this disruption that's happening? Yeah, I mean, um you know, probably in our space, streaming happened a little later. Um, the consumer base of Hispanics, you know, um, stayed, you know, and still does. Our linear business is still really successful and does really well. Um, but um, we noticed, and again, during the transformation, I know, you know, we talked about the merger, but yep. we saw that there was no Spanish speaking streaming service. So um, when Wade bought the company, he realized right then and there that was something we needed to do. Um, and again, that's helped with the merger. We are now the biggest global entity with VIX now being it. So with all our sports now, we kind of look at all of our platforms across the board. So we're multi-platform um, with all of our stuff. Um, and we have been doing sports on both. Um, it, definitely skews on linear, but I think we had the Euro Championships were definitely on VIX. Um, when we did Copa, we simulcasted it. Um, at the same time, we have Gold Cup in the summer of 25. Um, you'll probably see most of it will be on linear, but we'll probably be doing a little bit of stuff on, on VIX as well. So we need to be in both spaces. Our audience and our consumer trends are now not any different than what's been happening in English language. Um, we definitely have to be multi-platform. We do it in entertainment. We'll be doing it in sports. So we'll be following the trend that's going on in English language as well three to five years, there's been a lot of talk about shakeout, consolidation, all that. You see something similar across the entire industry? Yeah, I mean, oh God, the only thing that's constant right now is change. Um, I mean, I don't know if you and I, am I going to be here in five years? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Again, getting back to those contract I know, I need, where, where is he? Um, <laughs> you know, listen, the growth potential with Hispanics is so unbelievable that I do believe that Televisa Univision is going to be an enormous entity in the future. Um, it is not going away. Um, it's only getting bigger. In the next few years, I think we're going to be US alone. I think there's 75 million. Um, it's going to transform. It's going to keep going. And what I love about our company is that we're, we're small enough that we're fluid. 
So as things are merging and changing, we've been 75 able million to- 75 million is not that small though. It's not, and it's gonna be there. <laughs> yeah. But as a company, we're very flexible and fluid in, as the trends are changing that we're changing with it, um, which I love about it. Um, and uh, I think that you're gonna see, you know, we're seeing clients lean in more and asking us more about global opportunities um, in sports. Um, not all marketers are set up that way because, um, you know, they'll have different divisions in Mexico and, and different clients here. But, like, even with, uh, we didn't talk about this, but Liga MX, one thing that we did differently is we have the IP for Liga MX. So we don't just sell the media, we also sell the rights. This has been helping us elevate soccer in the U.S., because we now have major marketers that have come in and done IP. You're essentially the U.S. commercial arm we, for them. Yes, so you can do both with us. So State Farm, Expedia, T-Mobile, Hyundai um, have come in with the IP rights and the media rights and are leaning in really heavy. Um, we started doing it last year, um, and that's been huge because sometimes you gotta do the IP rights with someone else and you gotta do it over here and then you go over here and do the media rights, but now we have the whole package. And that has been a, a huge, huge uh, change for us. Is that a template you'd like to replicate? I love it. Uh, I'll do it all day long, all day long. Now, yeah. as you do all of that, where do women's sports factor in all this? We've been talking about this all day. It's been such a rocket ship in terms of the growth across the space. Um, how are you seeing all of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that we're actually talking about it because um, it's been a long time coming. Um, and I'm so excited to see what's actually happening across the board. You know, for us, you know, Liga MX is definitely the area that we also have the female rights to. Um, and this summer we did a summer cup um, that um, we had for the first time two, two championships um, with the Women's League and with uh, Feminile that we, we aired and um, had a lot of clients and marketers come in. Personally, I think I'd like to see more clients lean in. I think for us in the women's space, Hispanics probably are still on the back backboard than what's happening in English language. Um, but we, unfortunately, I think clients tend to look at what's happening first in English language, and then they kind of come and look at multicultural, especially with Hispanic. So we started getting there, but there's still a lot of more work to be done, and I think, um, I think we need the help of advertisers, I'll be honest with you. Last question, what do you, as you continue on this path, what do you still see as perhaps the biggest misunderstanding or misnomer about your company? Um, I don't know about the company. I believe, or, or the yeah. Spanish language market writ large. Um, clients believe that um, they can get Hispanics um, in English language, and not necessarily that because everything's now multicultural and the younger generation is coming in that they don't need it in Spanish language. Um, and that is not the case. Um, you know, we are a cultural phenomenon. Hispanics love and lean into brands that speak to them and the authenticity that directly comes and in directly and authentically. And I'm not saying that they can't get Hispanics in English language, they can, it's a different type. But when you lean into Spanish speaking and you come into our networks, no matter where it is, um, the connection that you make with a brand is life for life. And brands that do lean in, especially in sports where they haven't been before, I can't tell you how many advertisers we had in Copa come on for the first time because of Copa and hadn't been on our air before and made such a connection that now they're in for life. And that no other media company can say that. It's almost like a NASCAR type look it, here. It is, it is. So. Well, well, very good. I, it's a burgeoning market. We're obviously going to be continuing to keep track of it. But uh, Donna Speciali, I want to thank you for spending this time with us. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, everybody.